Hello and welcome to day number 4 of Superbase Launch Week 6. We've announced some super exciting features this week. Monday was our Docs v2 rewrite in Next.js, Tuesday was image optimization for Superbase storage, and yesterday was all about multi-factor authentication. If you missed any of those announcements, you can check them out on our YouTube channel, and while you're there, why not subscribe and click that little notification bell so you don't miss out on what we're dropping tomorrow. Today, we are super excited to be launching Superbase Wrappers. Now, this is a way to integrate data from multiple sources into one conceptual place, and we have Thor and Koppel here to tell us all about it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Superbase launch week number six. Today, we're launching Superbase Wrappers. Uh, and maybe, Koppel, you can quickly introduce what kind of Postgres foreign data wrappers are, and then also dive a little bit into what Superbase Wrappers are. Yeah, um, well, Postgres foreign data wrappers are, well, as you said, they already exist inside Postgres, but they are a very underutilized uh, aspect of um, Postgres. So what they allow you to do is essentially from one Postgres database, you can actually query another database. And how it works is that you, within the primary database, you can actually uh, specify the credentials for the secondary. And then you can set up a table inside the primary that kind of links uh, a table from the secondary to the primary. And let's say in the secondary table, you have um, your analytics and inside your primary, you have your users. Then you can do something like select all my analytics for these users. And it feels like there's a, a single database but actually, you know, the data is spread across these two databases. So it's actually a very neat feature. And uh, as we say, it's built into Postgres and the Postgres foreign data wrapper uh, actually uh, is maintained by uh, the core of the community. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of extended this concept with a framework um, built in Rust. And instead of just allowing you to uh, query any Postgres database, it can actually query now any other database uh, or in fact, any API. So as an example, um, you might have your Firebase database where you've got all your analytics once again, and you can actually query those analytics from your Superbase Postgres database. Um, so you can select all your user analytics. This of course means that you can uh, also migrate very easily if you have some data that exists inside your Firebase database. Now, we've started writing uh, wrappers for various different databases, not just Firebase. It's useful for other things like uh, data warehouses where you want to store large amounts of data. Um, this includes ClickHouse, uh, BigQuery. Um, we're writing them for um, Snowflake, uh, for S3. So any place where you store large amounts of data. The other neat thing is that we've built it as an asynchronous framework. Um, and so that means that you can query things besides just databases. You can also query APIs. A small example of this would be the Stripe API. So you can actually connect your Stripe account to your Superbase database, and you can actually query your Stripe uh, account like it's a database, doing something like select everything from stripe.customers uh or you know joining the subscriptions to your superbase users and this once again makes it feel like the stripe information exists inside your database and it means that you can sort of build apps a lot faster um one thing i wanted to touch on is uh kind of with foreign data wrappers there were um, there are existing kind of frameworks like steam pipe or or multicorn have we looked at those and kind of what were the the reasoning to create a new framework here. Yeah, and um, they're actually doing a great job, um, both of these ones. So um, Steampipe, um, we took a lot of inspiration from. They're um, using a Go framework, um, using gRPC, and they've done some very nice stuff. Um, it's actually kind of exists as a service. It's not so much like an extension of, or it's not a framework that you would use probably within an application. So we tried to see if we could use it um, but it didn't seem to fit the case. 
uh, perfectly. So the next one was uh, Multicorn, which has been around for a long time. And this is written in Python. And um, it kind of wraps a, a Python framework that allows you to extend things. Um, also, actually, this is what we started with. We started using it. Um, we started looking at it for our, our logs, uh, as an example. But what we found was that the sort of ecosystem was in a bit of a disarray um, and getting Multicorn had to build support for Postgres 14. And of course, 15's just come out as well. So what we found is that we think that we can just get a lot more efficiency within the ecosystem if we build the framework uh, using PGX, this uh, framework for for Postgres, uh, which is written in Rust. But also if we um, sort of maintain them all in one spot, that means you can write tests, you can upgrade all of them at once uh, for Postgres versions. So we've sort of created this mono repo of various different uh, wrappers that people can contribute to. Um, this means that sort of the ecosystem uh, can be sort of upgraded as a whole uh, rather than reaching out to many disparate teams. People can rely on Superbase to sort of push this forward as fast as, as we can move, basically. So we took inspiration from this uh, paper, actually, uh, which talks about on-demand ETL. And ETL means extract, transform, load. This is a data engineering concept that our um, data engineering team actually use. Um, there are various tools. We use Airbyte, uh, which is a great open source uh, tool for moving data around. Um, then we sort of wanted to extend upon this idea. Uh, so Foreign Data Wrappers actually gives us that. It's sort of on demand before having to move any data around. We can actually query the data warehouse, fetch the data itself, and um, you know, from there we can determine, well, where does the data engineering team need to get involved? And actually, if you're a user of Superbase, you've sort of started on this concept already. If you've been querying your logs um, using the dashboard that we provide, you can query all your logs using SQL. Um, this is actually kind of like analytics, and this is uh, through Logflare at the moment. Logflare is kind of like a foreign data wrapper, but we'll be extending it with super base wrappers. And so um, you've already been using this concept and soon you'll be able to join your super base data, your own data with your logs and using these foreign data wrappers. So you can see things like, oh, of this user in my super base database, how many REST requests have they made or how many times have they logged in? So you can see where immediately you get value out of the data rather than having to move the data from one system to another, wait a few days for the uh, movement to happen, and then start seeing insights. Now, um, that's kind of one side, actually, uh, reading data and sort of, you know, joining data. Um, what about sort of updating and, you know, actually writing data? Is that sort of something that, that you can do as well? These are two-way flows. Um, probably by launch week, we won't have um, completed many of the right uh, endpoints, but in theory, this goes two ways. So you can both read data uh, from external systems and you can write data to the external systems from your own. So um, this means that Perhaps you might want to clean up your Postgres database. It's becoming very large. You might want to shift it a lot of the data into S3 or something very cheap. Um, maybe you're getting uh, a lot of um, analytical data and it's taking up space and you query it very infrequently. You might want to aggregate it into one line and move the um, sort of detailed data out to something that's cheaper. Um, now you can do this with foreign data wrappers and you can do it on demand, maybe using something like PG Cron um, on a cron job, on a regular basis, you can move it from one system to another. So um, yeah, it's it's really, uh, it makes it feel like it's just another part of the database, which is very cool. Now, a lot of these things you can do today already using, you know, triggers, kind of database webhooks, and for example, triggering, um, you know, an edge function that then sort of uh, modifies the data or, you know, creates data within Stripe or what have you. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about kind of what's the benefit of doing that directly in uh, the database rather than, you know, maybe in kind of a separate system. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, the 
key for edge functions is that they're usually used for very discrete tasks, smaller tasks like passing through, um, uh, you know, passing through some traffic, fetching it, returning it, and actually um, they have a timeout around them. It's not designed for long living uh, sort of requests. And you can see this with, I think, um, both Netlify and Vercel might have this concept of the background functions that can run for up to 15 minutes. So really, you know, moving data around with a lot of data can take a long time. And so you probably wouldn't use these um, systems for these larger tasks. And so that's one reason why you would use wrappers instead of edge functions. Um, the second is that it means that you kind of don't need to write and deploy anything. As soon as you've linked the systems together, then you can actually start using them end to end uh, using any of the frameworks. So you wouldn't have to use Superbase uh, edge functions. You could actually write, you know, a request that comes in through Superbase JS, or you can connect to your database using any framework that you want. And um, you know, we don't want to force you into the Superbase ecosystem. We want you to use the database as much as you want, but you can use any library on top of Superbase at that point and still get access to the sort of foreign data wrapper concept. So because it's all the way at the bottom of the stack, it really means that anything you build on top of it um, will find it useful. Yeah, I think that also means that, you know, by extension, you know, no matter if you're using, say, Superbase JS or, you know, Postgres or, you know, GraphQL, Prisma, TRPC, SQLize, what have you, kind of no matter how you sort of interact with the database, seeing that it is in the database, as long as in the end it translates into kind of a SQL query, uh, you, you can utilize this, this functionality. Yeah, it actually felt like a little bit of magic when, when we tried it because of course I sort of was a bit of a guinea pig uh, testing out the Stripe uh, and the Stripe wrapper. And um, I actually connected the Stripe account and then used Superbase JS and it kind of just worked, which is neat. I um, selected all my Stripe customers from my Next.js application and I was able to use them just like I was querying basically any table in my database. So it kind of feels like magic. Whereas in the past, you know, I might've had to set up some migration path or set up an edge function. This way it was just very kind of set and forget. So um, I think the developer experience around foreign data wrappers is very cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I think also, you know, just making this a framework and again, you know, this framework is open source. Um, it is written in Rust, kind of the foreign data repos itself are written in Rust. And um, I think that's something where uh, people are excited to to get more into and maybe start contributing as well. So I think here we'd love to, you know, for you to, to have a look at the repos repository. Uh, we'll link it um, below, of course, and, um, you know, maybe give it a little star, open an issue uh, if there's a foreign data wrapper that, you know, you'd be excited to see or, you know, even kind of start contributing your your own foreign data wrappers. Jump over into the Discord channel and continue the conversation over there. And if not, we'll see you next time. Aw, oh, come on. I was hoping with all of this talk about wrappers, someone was going to drop a freestyle. But apparently not. Maybe next launch week. Foreign data wrappers do sound pretty amazing though, and I can't wait to simplify those nasty bits of my code that glue all of those services together. If you still haven't done it, it's time to subscribe to our YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash superbase and hit that little notification bell. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash superbase. This is where we'll be posting more info about each of these launches, as well as our top tier world famous memes. And join our community Discord over at discord.superbase.com to chat with nearly 11,000 folks who are also building cool things with Superbase. We'll be kicking off a Twitter space shortly to answer all the questions you might have around rappers. Maybe you can convince someone to drop a freestyle. So come hang out with the team and we'll see you the same time tomorrow for one more thing. Okay, probably several more things. We'll see you then.